So, hi, uh, I'm Dr. Julia Garcia Baeza. I'm a clinical assistant professor at the University Complutense of Madrid. And since I came back from the US, I've been very involved with multidisciplinary treatments, especially with what I called orthodontics and aesthetics. I would like to thank Densply GAC for inviting me to participate in this webinar to talk about what I love, which is orthodontics and aesthetics, how we improve the life of our patients, not only by giving them a better occlusion, a better function, but also providing them with a beautiful smile. In this 60 minutes webinar, I will start showing you a little bit of the system that I use and what I do and why I do use it. And then I will start talking about multidisciplinary treatments with plenty of different clinical cases. Perfect, so let us start. Since Angle, it is amazing how many different techniques, systems, and philosophies we have gone through the years, during, during the years. And even more important is all the great things that these people had introduced to our orthodontics field. As Angle, Beck, Tweed in the 1940s, Roth, 1980s, Ricketts, Alexanders, and also these last years, Damon with self ligation brackets. Also, don't forget the MBT technique, McLaughlin, Bennett, Trevisi, and all these people. And after all this, we are coming up with the CCO system. The idea of the CCO system that I use is to put together, to unify all this knowledge with the, with the excellent materials that we have today and also with the newest technology that a lot of different companies can provide us today. This is what we are doing with the CCO system. To me, the first C of CCO is the most important because it stands for complete. And this is what we do, complete clinical orthodontics. So we are not only talking about the flexibility of our wires or how good these brackets are, like in this crowding case, where we fit the wire into every single slot and solve the crowding in an easier way, as you can, as you can see here in these occlusal pictures. Or this other case, with ectopic canines, as you can see over here. Okay, I'm showing them right now with the pointer. And also, we introduce the wire into the slot of every single bracket. And everything becomes aligned. So it's not only about subligation brackets and wires, but also new technologies as CVCTs, mini screws, Periodontal problems, like you can see in these two images, like for example, how tipping of the molars, I mean, can affect this, uh, the bone or also the gums of our different patients. It's also important to us TMJs, as you can see here, and of course, corticotomies. To me, this is the beauty of the CCO system. It's a complete system where everything is important, diagnosis, treatment plan, treatment delivery, and patient management. Why do I use this system? Because regardless of where you start, the end is the same. It is a consistent, reproducible, and efficient system. Before starting talking about orthodontics and aesthetics, my topic, I would like to show you uh, six cases, only first and last wires, with different malocclusions. Okay, so you can see how consistent this system is. This will be the first case. You can see here we have a, it's, it's a class one, it's a class one molar, class one canine. I mean, not very difficult case, deep overbite. And let's see how we start solving it. These are the first wires. You can see now with the, with the brackets in place, the crowding that we have over here. Okay, and little by little, I mean, we start finishing the, the case. These are the last wires, small details here to finish the case and the case is done. You can see here all the internal pictures once the case is finished. Let's take a look to case number two, here with an ectopic canine, also class one, class one uh, molar, class one canine over here, retrocline incisors, okay, deep over by two. Again, same thing, first wires, last wires over here. We parallel both occlusal planes and the case is done. Okay, here you can see the intraoral pictures of case number two. Midline zone, we keep the class one canine, class one, uh, class one molar, but now our, our upper incisors look uh, nicer. Case number three is a class three, as you can see here, with lower extractions. 
lower premolars extractions. And the same thing, first wires, we keep working, these are our last wires, okay, and this is the end of the case. Here you can see the intro pictures for case number three. And let's go with case number four. Same thing. It's a class one. Uh, this is a class one case with uh, with severe crowding. This is a four by extraction case. And the same thing. Upper wires. I mean, upper uh, first wires, last wires, and done with the case. Intraoral pictures. Case number five is an open bite, as you can see over here. And again, four bias extractions, first wires, last wires, and the case is done. And the intraoral pictures. And the last case that I want to show you over here is a surgical case. It's also a class three case in which we are not doing lower extractions. What we are doing over here is a skeletal problem, and what we are doing is an orthognatic surgery. So let's get this patient ready. These, were, these, will be the, um, these are actually the first wires that we are using. Last wires, the surgery is already done, everything is already fixed, and this is the occlusion after the orthodontics and the orthognatic surgery with the CCO system. Intraoral pictures. And those are the six cases I wanted to introduce to you before showing you a little bit and talking about multidisciplinary treatment so you can see a little bit of how consistent and how reproducible and efficient this, um, this technique and this system is. So as I said before, regardless of where you start, the end is the same, and this is how it should be. So as I said, it's a consistent, reproducible, and efficient system. Perfect. So uh, after this small introduction, uh, a little bit of what uh, ortho system I use and what do I do in my day-by-day uh, -day, um, office, uh, I would like to introduce you my topic, my favorite topic. After I came back from the U.S., I started uh, working actually with some professionals that they are uh, prosthodontists. And it's amazing uh, how can we help each other. And it's amazing also um, how the communication between professionals and between specialties is um, how, how important it is. So this is why, what I want to show you a little bit uh, today in this 60-minute uh, webinar. So let's talk a little bit about orthodontics and aesthetics. I uh, divided this, uh, this um, lecture in four different groups. The first group would be facial aesthetics. I mean, we all know that we are able to change faces. This is nothing new, nothing new that I'm telling you right now. We all know that with orthognatic surgery, we are able to change faces. If we have a class three, a very protruded mandible, we know that we can change that face. We know that we, we are able to change lower profiles of our patients. So this is nothing new that I'm, that I'm telling you. We also know that, uh, that we are able to change faces and lower thirds lower facial thirds with orthodontics. We are able to improve it, to improve them, but we need to know that we are also uh, able to make them worse. And this is also something that I want to talk about in this lecture. I mean, how to um, be able not to, not to make, not, I mean, how not to make them, not to make them worse. Also, the second group that I will talk about is lateral management. I'm seeing a lot of small laterals nowadays in, uh, in plenty of adolescents and, and a lot of my patients in my office. So there's a lot of Bolton discrepancy, and I would like to show you how I'm managing those, uh, those problems and those situations. The third group that I would like to talk about is gingival design, okay? For me, that is very important, is talking about proportions, proportions of uh, pink structure and also about the white structure. The white structure will be the teeth, and also the pink structure will be the gums. I mean, when you smile, it's not only about having all your teeth aligned. It's also of the amount of gingiva that you are sewing when you are projecting that smile. And that is very, very important to me, and I would love to talk a little bit also, I mean, with some clinical cases, about gingiva design. And then the last group is what I call aesthetic zone. This is, uh, to me, the most interesting group of all of them is uh, the one, that, I mean, the most multidisciplinary um, group, and is uh, where I saw how we communicate between specialties, and I mean, I saw some tips of making uh, that communication a little bit easier uh, between professionals, which is, which we all know that is sometimes a little bit tough. Okay, so let us start with um, 
with the first group. The first group, which is facial aesthetics, as you can see over here. I mean, I'm not going to put any, um, any theoretical things over here. What I'm going to do is to show actually cases, clinical cases, so I can make myself understandable to visual pictures and to visual photographs from my own patients, okay? So let's talk a little bit about Anne. Anne, as you can see over here, she is approximately, uh, I mean, she is 28 years old. And as you can see, her face, has her frontal pictures, uh, well, her lower third is a little bit long, okay? And when she smiles, we can see that we don't, we don't love that smile, okay? She has a little bit of gingival, gingival smile, also this diastema, something is going on over here, okay? So let's see what it is. When we take a look to her profile, okay, right here, this profile is a little bit convex, okay? It's not very, very nice. The projection of the chin is not very nice either. Also, this, this upper lip, is not, um, is not very, very nice. And also, when she smiles over here, and we see the, her profile, the projection of the smile is not as beautiful as it could be. So let's take a look at her intraoral pictures, at her intraoral uh, photographs, OK? And here, we can see that she has a diastema, OK? It calls our attention, open bite, tiny open bite over here and on. And when we go to the right and to the left views, we can see that she has a class 3, class 3 canine, class 3 molar, and the same thing here. And this patient, C is, um, I mean, C is an orthognatic patient, okay? We need to do ortho, um, orthognatic surgery in this patient. She has a skeletal problem, okay? So we are going to see not only the last pictures of how this uh, face changed and how her profile changed, we are also going to see all, uh, all the mechanics that we went through with the CCO system, with this orthodontics, okay? Here you can see, as I said before, the gingival smile, okay, and the projection of the smile, which we, I mean, is not, is not the better smile that she can have. Here are the frontal pictures again, and here is the first time we place our brackets and we place our initial wires, okay? Very flexible wires, round wires. These are 014 centaloids, okay? So we fit our wire in every single slot, and we start leveling and aligning. We keep going. We keep leveling and aligning. We change our wires. We are now on 20 by 20 BioForce wires. They are also very flexible, OK? And we keep going, and we still need to parallel these occlusal planes, OK, before we get here into the surgery. We keep going, okay, she's almost ready for the surgery, and now we are on a stainless steel wires, 19 by 25. Everything is aligned now. The clusal planes are aligned. So this is right after the surgery. You can see everything here, the sutures, okay? And this is how she comes out, okay? The occlusion is not perfect, and now we need to do the finishing and detailing with this patient. These are our last wires, okay? You can see it over here. You can see that here I did some repositioning. You can see this new bracket over here just to fit our occlusion perfectly. Here you can see the overbite and overjet, okay? And see, is ready for taking off the braces. And this is how she looks after the ortho treatment and the orthognatic surgery. You can see here the class one, class one canine, okay? Canine and molar over here, overbite and overjet, and our midline, okay? after so when the uh, orthodontic treatment and the orthognatic surgery. Here is her occlusion. Okay, and here is the before and after, okay, of her face. So this first group, as I said, is what we call facial changes, facial aesthetics. So we know, we knew this before. I mean, nothing new. We knew that we are able to change faces. Uh, with orthognatic surgery. Look at the face now, look at her lower third that is looking better, but even better, please look here at the projection of the smile. Look at the difference between the gummy smile right now. No more op open bite over here. We decrease the vertical dimension in these patients also, okay? This is the before and after, the occlusion, intraoral pictures, and these are the changes in her profile. Okay, we can see the initial picture, as I said before, the upper lip, that we didn't like it very much. This mental labial angle, okay, 
which is not very accentuated. Also, the projection of the skin is not very, very beautiful. And now, with the orthognatic changes, the projection of the upper lip, the projection of the chin is much nicer. Okay? The same when sees a smiling. Look at the difference between the projection of the smile over here and look how it looks after the orthognatic surgery and the ortho treatment. Again, before and after. And here is an after her treatment and after two years of treatment with the orthognatic surgery. Okay, but as I said, nothing new. I mean, pretty much, I'm sure all of you knew this. Nothing new. But let's take a look to other cases. As I said at the, I mean, at the beginning with the introduction, I mean, we also know that with orthodontics, we are able to change the lower third of our patients. We are able to improve that upper lip a lot of times, okay, plenty of times, actually. But we have to be careful with the new techniques that are coming out nowadays because we are also able to worsen uh, that, that profile, too, and those faces. So let's take a case, um, one of my cases that I did too, and let's take a, uh, take a look to it very carefully. Okay, so this is Jennifer. As you can see, she's a very pretty girl, very nice girl. Okay, when you see the uh, frontal pictures, she looks very, very nice. Her proportions are pretty good. I mean, nothing very problematic, nothing that calls my attention, okay? When you see her smiling, we are seeing that she has a little bit of crowding over here. Well, more than a little bit is... Um, I mean, a little bit between moderate and severe, okay? You can start seeing the canine over here and this uh, lateral incisor, too, in a crossbite. But let's keep going. When we see her profile and when we take a look to her profile pictures, we can see that, look here, the upper and the lower lip. Okay, it's not the best profile I've ever seen, but it's not something that really calls my attention. If I'm able to improve it, that would be amazing, but, I mean, it's not, a, it's, not an, it's not a bad profile, okay? We can see here her profile in repose and also when she smiles that the projection of her lips are, I mean, is actually pretty, uh, pretty nice. Here are her uh, intraoral pictures. You can see the frontal view over here. Now we are starting to realize that she has a cross bite in both sides. She has... Um, transverse discrepancy of the maxilla, okay, of the upper of the upper jaw, okay, over here is a skeletal problem, but in the transverse dimension. We can see over here also the overbite and the overjet. It has almost an end on. We are able to see this crowding over here. But the most important part to me is actually right now the transverse problem that uh, we are able to see in this case and how we are going to solve it. So let us start uh, the same thing with the mechanics of our case. As you can see here in this picture, this is the first time I'm placing the brackets, okay? But what I want you to see is that C is wearing an RPE, okay? An RPE to make an expansion, an skeletal expansion. So we first do the expansion on her, and after that we start placing the brackets in the upper and in the lower arch, okay? But first of all, we need to solve the, that uh, transverse discrepancy on Jennifer. So we keep going, we take off the RP, and then we keep going with our wires. So our first wires, 014, okay, central wires, very flexible, thermoactivated wires, they are low deflection wires. So we are able to engage them in every single slot. This is the beauty of this technique. Okay, we have low friction brackets and also we have low deflection wires over here. Oh, we keep going, we just wait, we don't have to do anything else. Okay, as you can see, the bite starts closing. And we are now on the next wires and we are still leveling and aligning. Okay, over here, over here, we have 20 by 20 biofors. They are also thermoactivated wires. Okay, there are square wires, but thermoactivated, they are not as stiff yet. And once we get here, I mean, pretty much every, I mean, I mean, everybody can finish this case. I mean, maybe a little bit of a stripping in the lower, okay? But the case is pretty much done. I mean, the transverse is corrected, okay? Over here, midlines are on, okay? So we might need to do a little bit of a stripping in the lower, okay? And a little bit of uh, elastics, okay? To settle this occlusion. And the case will be pretty much done, pretty much done. But suddenly, at this point of the treatment, I realized this. I realized 
this profile. I looked at her when she was leaving and I was talking to her and I said, oh my God, I mean, I'm almost done with the case. I mean, I have it under control. I mean, this is not going to be a problem to me, okay, because I'm pretty much uh, able to close this, to uh, give intercostation over here, give a good occlusion, a uh, little bit of a stripping and fix it, okay, and I will be pretty much done. But this is what called my attention. So at this point, I started to see this profile. Look at her lips. Look at her upper and lower lip. Look at the projection of them, okay? And look also at the projection of the chin over here. So something was happening. So I decided to take new records at this point of the treatment. What is happening to the face? Frontal pictures, okay? Look over here. Look at the lips, okay? Take a look to the profile, but most important, we are going to take a look to the lateral step. I don't even need to trace it. This is the uh, lateral step we took at the very beginning of the treatment. Check out, please, the leaves over here, and this is right now, at this point of the treatment. There is a huge difference between both profiles. I mean, I'm making this profile worse, and this is something that I'm doing with my ortho treatments, with my ortho system. This is something that is my fault right now, and now I need to fix it. But how shall I fix it? I mean, the point is that for fixing this profile right now is that I have to do instructions in this case. And I need to tell the parents, okay, you know what? I mean, I told you that your girl was pretty much done, that everything was under control. But uh, you know what? Now I need to uh, take out four teeth. This is a problem. This is why I'm telling you the importance of a good diagnosis from the very beginning of the treatment. And that is the beauty of the CCO when I said complete. Because I said at the very beginning is diagnosis, treatment plan, treatment delivery, and patient management. And this is something that we need to take into consideration. So let's take a look. The top pictures are the very beginning, the initial pictures, and the lower, uh, the lower row over here is Jennifer right now. Look at her profile. Look at her set. And now, of course, we also traced it so, to see, I mean, what was the problem and what, uh, what was going on over here. So at this point, I mean, I decided to tell the parents that I needed to do four instructions and uh, that the case wasn't done yet. That it was going to take me pretty much uh, another, another year or so, okay? Because it's not only about uh, doing distractions, it's also about um, closing the spaces and controlling how to close, I mean, controlling that space closer. So here is where we are at this point, and I sent her uh, for distractions, four buys. But please, I didn't do anything, I mean, this is amazing how it looks, but this is uh, how she was. And I did the instructions, and she kept the same wires, and I didn't do anything. Please take a look to the canines. Take a look to the canines, okay? How they settled down without doing anything, only because they had a space now. Look them now, okay? Take a look to the overbite and overjet, okay, in the front part. Here in the frontal picture, you can see it also very nicely, okay? So we were here, we take the, I mean, we take the teeth out, and look at this overbite and over yet how it's settling down. Look at the canines, okay? And I haven't started closing the spaces yet. This is actually the first day I started the space closures with uh, centalo coils. This is how we do a space closure at the CCO system. And we start closing the spaces. This is the first day we start closing the spaces. And look, the profile, how it's changing, OK? This is the initial. This is when we realized that we were doing something wrong, OK? And here is when the instructions are done, but we are not starting with a space closure yet. So we keep going with the case. These are our last wires. All the spaces are closed now, OK? Last wires, our braided wires, look at the occlusal planes, everything is parallel, okay? Look at the overbite and overjet, everything is ready. And we take off our braces. Class one, class one. 
canine and molar, okay, and, with, uh, and without for bicuspids. But let's take a look to the most important part over here. Let's see how her profile changed. Here is she right now with the four extractions and the spaces closed. Let's take a look a little bit closer. So yeah, I could have told the parents that she was doing fantastic, perfect, without distractions, and that I was going to be able to feed all the teeth in her mouth. But that is not the point. I mean, I don't care about lots of techniques that nowadays are saying that, uh, you know what, I can feed all the teeth in the mouth. I don't need extractions. You know what, some cases we do need them. We do need to improve those profiles. Look at the difference between this case and that case, okay? If we are able with these brackets to fit in all the teeth, of course we are. We are able to do that. But we are able to do that and also we are able to worsen that profile because we want to fit all the teeth in the mouth. I mean, I don't think that this is the question nowadays. I mean, the question is not, uh, I mean, if we can do all of our cases without extractions. If we, if we need them, we do them. And that's it. That's it. So look now at the projection of the upper lip and look also at the projection of the lower lip. Also look at the chin. Look how the vertical dimension changed over here. So these are the, I mean, this is the initial picture. This is the middle of the treatment, okay, when we were, I mean, uh, having those problems. And this is the end of the treatment. And this is C, this is Jennifer over here, okay, happy and smiling. So this was the idea of uh, the first group that I wanted to talk, facial aesthetics. So as I said, we already saw an, okay, this is an uh, orthodontic and orthognatic surgery treatment. We know perfectly that we are able to change the faces like that. But also I wanted to show a case uh, like Jennifer, because it's a case that uh, sometimes with our ortho treatment, we are, uh, we are not improving the face of our patient. And uh, for me, and to me, this is uh, the most important part, to improve the face of our patient, okay? Or at least not, not to make it uh, worse. Perfect, so let's take a look to the second group, actually. The second group is laterals management. I call it like that uh, because and I wanted to give uh, like, a, a, um, like a group only uh, for the laterals because it's amazing the amount of small laterals uh, that I'm seeing nowadays in my patients, not only in adolescents, but also like in teenagers, but also in adults, adults cases, okay, that I leave my, my canines in class one, I leave my molars in class one, and suddenly uh, there, there is a space, there is a tiny diastema between the laterals and the canines. So how do I manage those cases? Well, let's take a look to Sakia. Sakia is a 29-year-old girl. She's beautiful, Afro-African-American girl, a beautiful, beautiful. Uh, when we take a look to the intraoral pictures, okay, uh, we don't like them that much. We can see a huge diastema over here. And uh, yes, with our first uh, view of this picture, we are realizing that the laterals are small, okay, that the proportion of them are not correct. Okay, so this is good, this is good because, I mean, from the very beginning we are seeing that something um, is not perfect and we need to solve it, okay? This is diagnosis from the very beginning of our treatments, very, very important. Okay, so this is, see, her frontal picture. Here she's smiling, okay, we can see that we can fix actually her teeth and she will look even uh, more beautiful than she is. And we can see here, over here, with a huge smile. And also, in this smile, we can also realize these small laterals, okay? So it's something that we, that, that we know and uh, that we need to fix from the very beginning of the treatment if we are able to do so. Here you can see her profile, beautiful profile, the projections of her lip, I mean of her lips, the upper and the lower is, uh, to me, is just amazing, okay? Very nice, very beautiful. The projection also of the chin, very, very nice, okay? Actually, her cervical angle over here is um, very, very nice. Okay, so no, no problems with her uh, facial profile. And let's take a look to her internal picture. So as I said, over here, we have this big diastema, uh, like a class two, okay, um, on the left side. A class two-ish, I will say, a little bit on, a, on the right side too, okay. 
and this small lateral that, that is what we are going to talk about in this work. Okay? Here is uh, the static picture where I take only from canine to canine, okay? So we can observe better um, any anomalies that we can have. And there is something that I want uh, to talk to you about. I'm not sure if you are familiar with this paper and uh, also with this gauge, with this device. This device is called Choose Gauge. It's uh, designed by a doctor in the uh, that uh, was teaching in the, at the NYU program over there. And um, what it does is it's not uh, exact, it's not uh, an, an exact device, but it's very good to realize uh, just by I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in a moment, to realize if the teeth are in a correct proportion or not. So actually, I mean, I use it pretty much in, in every of my, I mean, in every of my, uh, of my patients at the very beginning before I, before I start to have, a, to have a, a view, okay, and, and to see if our, I mean, if the teeth, if the central incisors, the canines, the laterals are in correct proportions. Okay, you can see here how I use it. Okay, I'm using it now, for example, in the model, and I can see it. Okay, I'm not going to explain how this works, but only because of these different lines, the red, the blue, okay, all these different lines that we have see here, we see that the laterals, actually, they are not in a correct proportion, okay, when we compare them to the central incisors. So how do I treat this case, okay? In this case, to me, I mean, uh, to me, every time I'm able to build up the laterals, I do so, okay? I prefer to build up the laterals and, and, uh, and uh, maintain a good occlusion. Maintain the canines in class one, the molars and premolars in class one, and if I have a small diastemas, uh, build up those laterals, okay? The problem is in the laterals and not in the rest of the teeth. So why I'm going to start doing a stripping in the lower, for example, just to be able to fix those tiny diastemas in the upper? Okay, if the problem is in the lateral incisors, what I do, is correct that problem, okay, and solve that problem. In these cases, for example, as you can see, as you can see actually in this case, in Sakia, in this girl, uh, we have enough space to build up the laterals from the very beginning of my treatment. To me, every time I can do this, I do it. Why? Because I start with the correct proportions of all of my teeth from the very beginning of my treatment. So every time I can do this, I do so. So here you can see actually with the gauge that now the laterals are in the correct position, okay, and I start doing the build-up, very easy. I mean, I do a WhatsApp, it doesn't have to be something amazing. Of course, after my ortho treatment, she will go to the prostodontist, and I mean, and the patient will get like a nicer composites or nicer veneers or whatever. But for the moment, I mean, this is more than enough to me. I mean, we take a guide over here, a silicone or PBS guide, okay, and we just, what we do, here are the small laterals, what we do is we start building up these laterals with some composite. I mean, it's fine if you do it with probable composite. What I want is just to give the correct proportions. I don't want them to be beautiful right now, so just the correct proportions. So here, is the, the, here are the build-ups, okay? These teeth are now with the build-ups, and we can see, and we check it again, that we have the correct proportion. And we start with our ortho treatment. Our laterals are built up. We start with our ortho treatment, okay? We keep going, CCO system, the, th the same thing, okay? A straight wire appliance, self-ligation bracket, and low deflection wires. This is the idea. Keep going, and we finish the case, okay? So here you can see the static pictures, okay? We are seeing here that we have 7 millimeters and 7 millimeters, okay? The correct proportions. Of course, they're not very beautiful. I mean, it's something that I did. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't do the reconstructions very nicely, actually. But of course, I will send her to the prosthodontist after this, absolutely. And here is she, after her ortho treatment and after we built up her laterals, her lateral incisors. Here is she, initial and final, and here is she. Okay, this is a tiny trick or a tiny tip that I'm, uh, that I'm telling you, like uh, at this gauge, for example, sometimes it gets very boring to start measuring all the teeth and doing the bolt on discrepancy. So this is a very easy way and a very visual way to see if our, if our teeth are uh, in a good proportion or not. 
And actually, also what I'm trying to tell you in this group is that every time I have a small laterals and I'm able to build them up from the very beginning of my treatment, I do so. I do so. It's much easier to start with everything in correct proportions that then at the very end start leaving the correct space, like a 0.5 here, more of a DMS of a diastema or whatever. So this is what I do in my in my cases. Okay, so uh, I already talked about the facial aesthetics. Also, I talked about the lateral management, how important it is. But what I do want to talk also about is about gingival design, okay? About what I said before, the pink structure and also the white structure, the proportion of them, okay? When you are smiling, the projection of that smile has to be beautiful. And these white and pink proportions and these structure, I mean, these uh, white and pink structures have, um, have their own proportions, okay? And there is where the beauty of a smile is too. So let's take a look with different cases and different things that happens, okay? So here is Brittany. Brittany is 14 years old, okay? You can see over here at her smiling picture, a little bit of crowding, okay, in the upper right. But there is nothing crazy, as you can see here in these intraoral pictures. Class 1 canine, class 1 molar, deep bite, in this case, you can see here in the lateral pictures, deep bite case, okay? So we start with our ortho mechanics. Same thing, these are our first wires. You can see a little bit the crowding that we have here in this side, okay? And we keep going. First wires, keep going, okay? These are already stainless steel wires, 19 by 25. We need the stiffness, okay, over here for improving this overbite. Last wires, and the case is done, okay? Perfect. And here you see, smiling, very nice. Okay, but as I said, this group is called gingival design. So let's talk about the pink and the white structure. Look what is going on in this case, okay? This is the initial picture. We place our brackets. Look right now when everything is starting to level and align, how the gingival margins are starting to get designed, okay? Look up here, look at this canine, look at the lateral incisor. And look how is this changing, okay? And only with our ortho treatment. We keep going, different wires, last wires, and this is the end of the case. Take a look, please, to the gingival margins, how they change from the very beginning, the first picture, to the last picture over here, okay? This is all the sequence, how the gingival margin change only with our ortho movement, okay? So we know that this happens sometimes, okay? You can see here the gingival margins, you can see how they change over here. Perfect, we are extruded and we also know that a lot of times the bone and also the soft tissue comes down when we are doing extrusion or when we are doing an intrusion, sometimes that gums also come up, okay, and the bone too. We know that, but there are some other cases, like for example, Joe, okay, that we see other things while we are doing our ortho treatment. So let's take a look, okay, to Joe. You can see here, he is 12 years old, super nice kid, super nice kid. You can see also uh, now a little bit of crowding in her, I mean, at his smile. You can see the profile over here, this chin, this uh, mental labial angle, okay? And when we take a look to his intraoral pictures, we can see that he is also a deep bite, okay? He's more severe than Brittany, the case that I just showed you before, okay? But he's also a Brittany. So let's take a look to what happens to the gingival margins here in this case, okay? We start with our, um, with our brackets and first wires, 014 centaloid. Look here that we are not able even to see the brackets, okay? And we start leveling and aligning the case. We keep going, we are paralleling, okay, here, upper and lower occlusal planes, but take a look to the gums, take a look to the gingival margins, okay? Look at the very beginning, the first time we place the brackets, and look how is this now, okay? A lot of people will say, oh, you know what, that is a bad oral hygiene. And you know what, that is a factor. I mean, that is a factor that happens. And that is something that makes our, the, our gums, okay, um, like to be bigger, okay, and also to have like a hyperplasia of, a, of, um, of the gingiva. I mean, but it's not the only factor. 
is not bad oral hygiene is not the only factor. Actually, I mean, Joe, I mean, wasn't that bad with the oral hygiene. But sometimes there are forces or there are different movements and everybody reacts in a different way. So a lot of times we do have these problems with our gums and with our gingival margins. At this point, knowing this, okay, we need to tell the parents and they need to know it that um, they need to have done a gingivectomy. This is important because, of course, it's very important, the occlusion over here, as you can see in this lateral view, but it's very important over here how these incisors look, okay, how this aesthetic zone looks so the projection of the smile will be nicer. So as you can see over here, okay, this is how the gums uh, were before, and here is after the gingivectomy. Okay, a very important tip that I want to tell you is that I always do my gingivectomies uh, when I have my last wires placed. My last wires, I'm only placing them for four to six weeks, no more than that, four to six weeks. I do it before taking off the braces because a lot of times when we design the gingival margins with the gingivectomies, there are plenty of times that we see a tiny triangle here, tiny a black triangle or a tiny diastema that we want to close, okay? And once the brackets are off, this is impossible to do. I mean, we are not able to place the brackets back because the patient will not accept it. So that is why I do always, okay, my gingivectomies at the very end of my treatment, okay, with my last wires, very end, just in case there is something that I, I need to correct in my finishing and detailing phase, okay? So this is how we finish and we end up the case over here with the gingivectomy done. These are the lateral views. So this is here, Joe, with the hyperplasia. This is here with the gingivectomy, okay? And this is the case, finished and done. And here it Joe. Okay. Another case that I want to show you is Daniel, okay? Daniel is uh, 34 years old, okay? And as you can see here at his smile, uh, he has a severe, he has a severe crowding over here. So let's see, uh, and let's talk a little bit also in his case about the pink and the white structure, okay? How we are going to solve this problem too. His profile is pretty much, uh, I mean, it's nice, it's good. I mean, upper lip and lower lip are fine, I mean. Nothing crazy, nothing that calls our attention. Okay, and here we can see the huge crowding that he has. He has also an acrotic upper incisor, okay, in which we did the endo before starting with our ortho treatment. That is very important. Everything needs to be fixed before we start our ortho treatment. So here's a, a four extraction case, as you can see over here. We uh, took out four premolars and we start unraveling the case. First, I mean, first wires, we place the brackets and we start unraveling, 014 centalo wire. And we keep going. Over here, we still are leveling and aligning. Look at the lower occlusal plane. So we are still leveling and aligning, okay? It's a 20 by 20 by force wire, very flexible. And at this point, as you can see here, the wires that they are shiny, okay? It's a 19 by 25 stainless steel because we do need, we do need the stiffness. To, um, to finish, um, uh, par I mean, paralleling these, uh, these occlusal planes over here and to improve them, okay? So as you can see here in the front of you, we still have these curvatures over here and we, are, we still need to work on that. Look how they look now, how they are now, okay? Better, much better. And now we are starting, okay, with the details also. Look at the upper incisors. Look at this black triangle that is over here. And this is because of my bracket placement. This, is, uh, this happened because I had a wrong bracket placement. That is why I reposition these brackets over here. Let's take a look right now a little bit closer, okay? Here are my incisors. You can see this black triangle over here and the long axis of both of my upper incisors that they are not correct. So what we do is we reposition those brackets. Take a look now, okay, now they are better. Look at the wire, and this is what we get in four weeks. Good, so no more black triangle over here. Now the long axis of our central incisors looks fine, looks perfect. 
but take a look to the pink structure. So from here, look at the gums up here. Look what happened in four weeks. And he doesn't have a bad oral hygiene. He doesn't. But there are other factors, as I said before, that makes the gum, I mean, grow, I mean, a little bit more and make the, the, the gums that are not nice anymore. Okay? So at this point, when I'm doing the detailing and the finishing, is when I decided also to start with a gingivectomy before I take off the brackets. Here is when I do the gingivectomy, okay? And this is seven days post gingivectomy, okay? And this is how we end up with the case. Please take a look now in the frontal picture how the gingival margins look like right now, okay? Now we have designed those gingival margins. Now the proportion of the teeth are nicer, okay? So let's take a look from the very beginning, okay, over here when we have this black triangle, okay, because of a wrong inclination of the upper incisors. Now we reposition the bracket and the inclination looks much better, but the gums, they're not nice anymore. And here is when we are done with the brackets and done with the gingivectomy. Now we have a correct proportion, okay, of white and pink structure. This is the case done, okay, class 1 canine, class 1 molar, of course, with four extractions, midlines on. And also, I always put this picture because I want to show also the correct overbite and the correct overjet, a good anterior guidance. Here are excursive movements, okay, for a dynamic occlusion. And here is Daniel at the end of the case, okay? You can see here the before, okay, and the after. Also, his hair grew a little bit, okay, with our mechanics. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, okay? But here you can see also that uh, he had a little bit of a gummy smile, that it got worse during the treatment, and now we have a correct, uh, um, a correct I mean, the correct proportions of teeth and, and, uh, and gums, okay, of pink and white structure over here, okay? The projection of the, of the smile now is looking much nicer. Good. And then this is, ah, I forgot that I had this over here. Yeah, this is eight months post of the treatment, and he's getting also a bleaching of his upper central incisor, okay? And everything is looking much nicer, and everything is stable, as you can see over here. So this is the end of Daniel. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And the last thing I want to talk about, okay, the last group that I was uh, telling you at the very beginning um, that I want to talk about is the aesthetic zone, what I call the aesthetic zone. Actually, is uh, what I call the aesthetic zone is uh, the teeth, actually the, the six upper teeth from canine to canine. I call them aesthetic zone because pretty much are the teeth that we see uh, when we are smiling, okay? And they have a lot of importance, okay, when we are talking about multidisciplinary treatment. So, um, as I said before, I love this group. I'm in love with this group. I mean, I, I, I love to share uh, my job, and uh, I love the communication between specialties, even though sometimes I know that it's very tough. And I will show you a case um, to show you a little bit how we talk uh, between the different doctors that we are in our office. Um, and I will talk about this, this group with, with this case. So we had a patient, okay, in our office that, that came like this, okay? She had a trauma, she had an accident, and actually she broke her upper uh, left incisor over here. As you can see, the incisor is not only broken, okay? Number 21 is not only broken, it's also apically displaced. So when we see this, there are always um, several options. Always. There are always several options that you need to discuss about. So, okay, I mean, the first option over here is, uh, okay, I can uh, take number 21 out, okay, and place an implant. That could be an option. But take a look to the gingival margins. Look at the displacement of the gingival margin of number 21. Okay, if I take out this tooth and I place an implant over here, or I mean my implantologist, uh, my surgeon, place uh, an implant over here, okay, in number, in number 21, look at the gingival margins. Whenever this patient smiles, you can see here the, um, the, the smile over here, okay, look at, this, look at this gingival margin of number 11, okay, and look, if I place the implant here and I start with the incisor up here, 
I mean, the asymmetry is going to be so big that the case is not going to be beautiful at all. So this would be an option, but it's an option that we don't like that much. Another thing that we can do is we can extract that tooth, okay, and we can do regeneration, actually, okay, with soft tissue, with hard tissue. But this is something that is very, very difficult sometimes for uh, surgeons as, and also for prosthodontics. Why? Because it's very easy to them to gain, um, I mean, to gain thickness, okay, to gain thickness, for example, in this part with, uh, with connective tissue grafts, for example. But for them, it's very difficult to gain tissue in a vertical way, like down here. So at the end, I mean, that is not going to be uh, very possible. So at this point is when you need to tell them as an orthodontist and tell uh, your other colleagues and tell them what you are able to do with this case. You already know that this tooth is going to be extracted. Perfect. Why, uh, why not to use it before? Why not to use it meaning that we are able to extrude this tooth with, with ortho. We are able to extrude this tooth and also at the same time we are extruding this tooth, we are able to bring this soft tissue down. We are able to bring soft tissue vertically and actually put both gingival margins at the same level. Okay? This is the idea. Sometimes our surgeons, our prosthodontists, they don't need, they don't know what we are able to do. So we need to tell them. I mean, how many, I mean, what, how, how we can help them. So we are over here. We place brackets and take a look now where our gingival margin is. So we build up a little bit of uh, of this like of this tooth, okay, over here, and for placing the bracket, for being able to place the bracket and start extruding this tooth, okay. Take a look where is the gingival margin now, okay, of number 11, and where is of number 21, okay? It's even lower. This is what we got with our extrusion, okay? We did, first of all, of course, an endo before, before starting with extrusion, okay? And over here, we start with extrusion. Look at this tiny Gouda percha that is over here, okay? And look now, okay, it, uh, it helps us like a, a reference. Okay, over here, and we, and we can see that we did pretty much 4 millimeters of extrusion, which is pretty much the amount, okay, of soft tissue that we gain over here. Perfect. So at this point, okay, we are ready. They extract the tooth, we gain the soft tissue, they place the implant, they place a connective tissue graft also for giving some thickness, but the vertical soft tissue is what us, as orthodontists, we did. I mean, we helped them with that, okay? So we, they keep going with their treatment. Perfect. You can see here the volume that they gave with the, with the connective tissue graft. But as I said before, okay, the vertical soft tissue, I mean, the amount of, uh, of soft tissue that we gained vertically, it was because orthodontically we did, a, a, we did an extrusion, okay? And we brought down that soft tissue. So here they place a provisional, okay, and uh, they leave the implant over there and they wait, okay? And at this point, I mean, we are almost ready. They are almost ready over here, okay? Same thing, same thing. They are starting doing this, okay? They keep going. We keep going with our ortho treatment, okay? And everything is almost ready. Look at the gingival margins. Look at the extrusion over here that we did, okay? Now everything looks nice. In this other incisor, they were going to place a veneer, okay? So here was an implant, and in the other incisor, they were going to place an, a veneer, okay? So they had the best uh, uh, symmetry possible in both, in, uh, in both central incisors. So we are done with our, with our job. I mean, no more ortho. We did everything we could. I mean, we helped them, okay? And now is uh, time for them to keep working. They take their own models, okay, and they start doing their wax-ups, their things, okay. They start doing provisionals. It's amazing how important are provisionals for the patient. So they can start seeing uh, how it's going to look like, okay, and if they like it or not, and they are able to decide also. These are the provisionals, okay. This is the very beginning of the treatment. These are provisionals, okay. This is acrylic. 
they keep going, they keep working with the provisionals is a, a very um, a very difficult job actually. Here are the provisionals, but take a look to the to the gum. Look how healthy it looks, and look at the gingival margins right now. Okay, we take at the color, okay, of the teeth. They place the veneers. They place at the crowns of the implant. Okay, look with the provisionals what they did. Okay, I mean what they did at the soft tissue. So the tooth looks like it looks like it's coming out of the gum, like it was a real tooth. And this is the end of the treatment. As you can see here, the implant, okay, in the other, in number 11, is, this has a veneer over here, and this is the end of the treatment. The most important part, and what I want you to look at, is at the gingival margins, please. This is the most important part to me. This is what we did. I mean, without our help as orthodontists, without extruding this tooth and bringing that gingival margin down, this result would have been impossible. So please, communication is the main thing if you will want to have excellent results. So uh, pretty much this is it, okay? I loved, uh, I loved this, um, this quote that I say, part art, part science, all orthodontics. Uh, I hope you had enjoyed the lecture and I hope uh, it's been also useful. And please, I mean, anything you need, just let me know and get uh, in touch with me. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.